Hello and welcome to Maker Hangar. My name's Lucas Weekly, and today we're going to be setting up the radio for the Maker Trainer, getting that all set up, and we're also going to be checking the CG of our airplane. So let's get started. So before we get into any of the real programming, we first need to make sure that everything's moving the right way and that the plane is bound. So that's what I'm going to do right now. I have the bind plug already plugged in. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to plug in the battery. Turn on the radio with the trainer switch held down. Power it on, wait for it to bind. The light inside stops, just starts flashing slowly. Let go. It's now solid. Okay, now that we're bound up, I'm gonna remove the bind plug. Close out the hatch. And we're gonna check to make sure all our control surfaces are zeroed out. Using the elevator as an example, we can take a popsicle stick as a reference of how flat it is, and we can put it over the control surface, and we see that it's pointed down a little bit. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna take off the servo arm, and put it back on, just change the where it is. Okay, so now you can see it's facing up a lot more than what it was before. Now, we're always gonna want some a little bit of up trim on this, so that should be okay for now. You can always change that later. Going to the ailerons, we're gonna flip the plane over. We can put our popsicle stick back on. We see that it's facing a little bit too far down. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna come in here with my X-Acto knife and pop off the servo arm. Just get it off. And then I'm gonna position it again and using my X-Acto knife, put the servo arm back on. Okay, so we have that one. Let's go over to the other side. Now if the control surface is in between, like this is too far this way, but when you go one click over, it goes too far the other way, then you have to redo your uh, push rod. And that's just undoing one of these, putting it back on, changing the dimensions around a little bit so that it fits. Now I'm gonna have to do this on this one and the other aileron. So let me show you how to do that. So you wanna position the servo arm so it's facing up or perpendicular with the surface of your wing. And then you can go from there to make your adjustments to the push rod. So I kinda of like it there. So I need to add some distance to the push rod. I'm gonna take this off, move it from here. And go on this side over here. Try that. Okay, now that we got the control surfaces all leveled out, now we need to check which directions they're moving in. So we're gonna flip the plane over now. Okay, so we have the plane facing away from us. And here's our controller. So we're gonna check this stick over here. This is what we're gonna be testing right now. For the elevator, when you push down on the stick, it should go up and obviously we're reversed right now. So when I push up, it goes up. This is not the right way. And then the ailerons, when I push to this side, that side should come up, the one that I'm pointing to, so that's right. And then the same with the other side, it should go to where I'm pointing. So the ailerons are fine, but the elevator needs to be reversed. So let me show you how to do that. Okay, so going into the menu, we hit the side scroll. We're gonna scroll down to setup list and going to reverse. So we're gonna find our elevator, which is right here, and just click it, and then go to the reverse. Now we can check it over here, and now when we pull up, we see that it's going up now. Okay, so if our ailerons were reversed, we could set that up right there, but mine are fine the way they are, so we're gonna leave them. That's how you reverse the servo. So let's move on to doing the travel adjust. Okay, so the ailerons don't really need to have travel adjusted for them because they're pretty much unobstructed. Now, the elevator is obstructed because it has the rudder in its way and also the tail boom at the bottom. So we need to set the parameters on the limits of the control of the elevator. So when I go to pull up over here, you can see it's touching here, but it's also the servo is whining. That means that it's under tension. So we're gonna alleviate some of that tension by changing the 
travel adjust. Now if we go down, you can see we reach our limit there, but the servo keeps going, so we're bending our push rod. So you definitely wanna change that as well. Okay, so in the menu, we're gonna scroll over to travel adjust. We're gonna to go to the elevator, and we see that it's 125% up. Now, normally it's 100%, I don't know why that's set. This is a new model. Anyway, we're gonna bring this down to 100%. And so you can see the arrow goes down, it's 120. So we're gonna hold that, scroll down to 100. We're basically scrolling down until we stop hearing the servo whine. So let's just go back to 105 just for good measure. Okay, now for the next one going up, we do need to look at the plane. Okay, so when we push up on the stick, we can see the push rod is being bent. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna scroll the wheel and doing the same thing that we did before and bring the number down until the push rod comes back to be straight. So, That's about 35%. We still want to have some throw on the down elevator, even though the plane is always trying to go down, but we definitely want much more up elevator. Okay, so now the travel has been adjusted. So when I pull up, it only comes to this point right here. And then when I push down, it only goes to its stopping point down there. The ailerons are set up so that they move 100% in either direction. But this is a little bit too much. So instead of doing a travel adjust, we're actually gonna do dual rate so that we can get a different amount for these. So let me show you how to do that. So backing out of the travel adjust menu, we're gonna go back to the menu and go to dual rates and expo. Click this. Now the aileron is at 100% currently, and this is a lot, and it's gonna roll the plane really quickly. So I'm gonna bring this down to about 50%. Okay, so, the elevator is okay at 100% either way since we set the travel adjust for its limits and you definitely do want to keep it like that. But what we can do is add some expo so that it's a little bit more controllable at the lower ends of the stick. So we're going to add about 50 or 40% positive. Never want to go negative. We're going to do oops, We're going to do about the same for the ailerons as well. Now, the dual rates is activated by a switch, and that can be assignable to one of these up here. Now, the aileron one is in a unique position because I can hit it really easily when I'm flying. So I want this one to control all three of my dual rates. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go back in the menu, go backwards, go to the setup list, go down to dual rate combo, and then set that up to be my aileron. So now, when I go back to the list, dual rates, and I flip this switch up in the top, now you can see that they all changed back to 100%. So I can go back and forth and toggle between these two settings in flight. So this one would be more acrobatic than this one being more slow flying and docile for beginners. So let's look at what this did. Okay, so we have our stick, and when we pull up, you can see that it's very minimal at the bottom reaches of the stick and then it goes up to their full movement, which is what we wanna see. For the ailerons, it's the same way. They move slightly in the middle to give you more control and then they go 50% each way for like this. And now if we flip the switch up to the top, now we can see our ailerons are moving a lot more and our elevator is moving constantly with our stick. So that is dual rates and that's how you should set it up for beginner flying. You don't wanna go 100% in all the directions because that is very hard to control, even for me. Okay, so really quickly, let's check our directions again. So we go to the left aileron, the left aileron comes up, go to the right, the right aileron comes up, you pull up and the elevator comes up. Now we're gonna check our motor direction right now. We can take off the nut and we're gonna get our prop and we're just gonna place it onto the shaft. Don't tighten it down or anything, we're just gonna place it on. We're gonna run up the throttle a little bit, and we see which way the prop is spinning. 
Now the way you mount the propeller is that the text, which is on the top, faces towards the direction in which you're going to be pushing the plane. So in this case, the text faces towards the front of the plane. So this is where we put it on. And we can see that where the propeller is scooping the air is being reversed at what we're doing right now. So we're going to take off the prop. We're going to go into our fuselage and we're going to reverse our motor. This is very simple to do. Just need to grab our wires out of here. Okay. Take any two of them, like I explained before. Unplug them, switch them, and plug them back in. Now, sometimes I mess up and I just plug them right back into where they were before, so I always put it on before I button everything up to make sure I did it right. And I did, so you can now see that the scoops are scooping the air in the correct direction. And that's how you reverse the motor and test which way your direction is going. So I'm gonna tuck all these wires back in. Now this is when you can attach your ESC on the inside of your fuselage or you can just let it dangle loose. It doesn't really matter as long as it doesn't come too close to your receiver. Okay. So now that that's in place, we can go ahead and put on our nut. Be very careful of your throttle at this time because now you have a live propeller and we now have thrust. Okay, so the final thing to go over is your center of gravity or your CG. And this is really important for when you fly your plane because if it's too tail heavy, the plane won't fly at all. It'll just do backflips and crash. But if it's too nose heavy, then you're going to be fighting it the whole time and you're not going to be able to fly it and you probably won't even be able to land or get altitude. So this is obviously pretty important. Now on the Maker Trainer, I've pretty much designed it to take a 2200 milliamp three cell. Up in the front, we put the Velcro there before. Let me go ahead and unplug this. So the CG is where the plane balances. Now, I could give you fancy measurements on where the uh, you put your fingers to make it balance, such like that, but every plane is gonna be different and depending where you put your wing, that's also gonna change your CG. So the way that I normally do this is I put the battery in and then I go outside and I hold this over my head and I go running with it. And then when I'm running at a fast enough speed and then I feel that it's getting lift, then I let go and see what it does. But I always keep my hand next to it so it, it doesn't fall. If it falls backwards, then it's too far back and you can move your battery a little bit farther forward. If it noses down, then you're too nose heavy and you can bring the battery a little farther back. Now. When you get it perfect, it should say perfectly level when you let go of it and then come back into your hand. Once you get to that point, you might wanna go a little bit farther forward on the battery. Having a little bit slightly nose heavy plane is better than having a slightly tail heavy plane because all it's gonna do is it's gonna self ride itself because it's falling straight down and all you have to do is pull up to get out. With a nose heavy plane, you always have to be pushing down and it's just gonna be flying backwards. So that's it for CG, and that's pretty much it for the setup, and you're ready to fly. So you might have been wondering what all these switches next to the sticks do, and these are called trim tabs. They allow you to trim out your airplane or get it to fly better. Now basically what you're gonna do for these is you can't really set them on the ground, you have to set them while you're flying. So saying your plane is pitching down, so that means that you're gonna be pulling up on your elevator. So instead of having to hold down your elevator the entire time flying, well, you can use the trim tabs, which is kind of like a permanent stick and push it down, which will elevate your elevator. So it's just like you holding the stick down like here. And uh, when you're trimming out in the air, you can incrementally add these to make the plane just fly straight when you let go of the controls, which is what you want. So say if we're banking to one way and we always have to be holding it to the right, well then you can add right trim to it and it'll do the same thing as you holding it. So that's what trim does. 
you can't really set this until you're flying and it's pretty easy to go and set. All you have to do is while you're flying, get up high enough that if it's nosing down, you can compensate for it and get up enough air and then quickly come over here, click it a couple times, go back and then go from there and keep doing it again until it's tuned out and trimmed. Once you have it trimmed, then it'll fly perfectly and you don't have to mess up that again. That's it for this episode. Next time, I'm gonna show you how to use a flight simulator to learn how to fly. So I'll see you then. Thanks for watching.